if someone, the cleanest self-defense incident in the entire world, someone broke into my house and they had a gun and I shot that person, when the police arrived, if I had not had an opportunity to call Richard, to call Edwin, to call Leslie, I would say nothing. Yep. I would say nothing. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today we're talking about talking to the cops. Should you talk to the cops? What should you absolutely not do? What do the pros do and what do the experts do? But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And I think there's a good opportunity here for a little bit of background and just kind of a case study of what happens when you talk to the cops. Right. So um, this is one. So I listen to um, like I fall asleep listening to like true crime murders. Yeah. As does as do we all murder porn. Aww. Murder corn. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> As do we all. So I was listening to Dateline, and this is one of my most favorite self-defense um, mess-ups in which there are these two neighbors in Montana. Mm -hmm. Defendant name, Joe Campbell. Joe Campbell had what looks as though it very much could have been a legitimate self-defense incident. It happened between neighbors. There's always so much backstory to that. I mean, it's not, I mean, it, what is your opinion on how clean cut neighbor shootings are? Never. They're awful. Because they're awful. there's the problem is people bring in past stuff into the mm -hmm. immediate incident and juries, judges, prosecutors, yeah. they just don't consider any of that stuff relevant. Super, super important that you try not to shoot your neighbors because it really doesn't end well. It ends often like this. So Mr. Campbell shoots his neighbor, um, says, Look, he pulled a gun on me. I had to shoot, had to save my life. They've had this ongoing dispute. Basically, it's like an easement dispute and they're trying to enter someone's property and it's just it's a long mess and so he tells police that night he gives a detailed breakdown of i shot this many times i shot him here then i shot him here he was doing this he was blah 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 and so what does that do for him that night well he slept in his own bed he did sleep in his own bed that night they said okay colorable self-defense claim but then what happened well the physical evidence starts to not line up with the statement right and that can happen. That can happen. I don't like, I mean, so basically he's like shot him in the chest, then he spun around, shot him in the back. Um, they go in at autopsy and they say, hmm, looks to me like this first shot was actually to the back. It paralyzed him and then he was executed. I don't like that. I don't think there's good science behind that. However, my guess is that what happened is he gave the statement that night. Police said, yeah, sounds credible. Let's figure this out. And then they looked and they saw all the call outs from, you know, years of disputes. People started calling in, family members of the deceased started calling in, and they said, hmm, I don't know if he's a good guy or not. And then they made the physical evidence, they interpreted it in a way that looked more like murder, because I don't think you can order shots. I am a big believer, and there's lots of science that says you cannot reliably order shots in most instances. And so he gave these statements, and then they were able to take the physical evidence and be like, liar, yeah. liar. Yeah, so this October 2013 incident, he went to trial, ultimately resulted in a mistrial, but he entered a no contest plea when everything was all said and done. He yeah, pled, he to, pled to like a, a manslaughter. Yeah, manslaughter. Or like Man, a, manslaughter. Was sentenced to 20 years in prison. That was probated. I don't think he spent any jail time on that. But you see just how that little statement I'd seen cost him a whole heck mm -hmm. of a lot. You know what else costs a lot? Identity theft. In 2022, the US FTC reported that Americans lost $8.8 .8 billion to identity theft and fraud a 49% increase over 2021. But you can protect yourself for a fraction of the cost. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. You've heard me tell this story before. I tried it out for myself. I Googled one of my sister's phone numbers and immediately found her home address, which is pretty scary because she has her information hidden by law because she's a former felony prosecutor. That's where Aura comes in. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app. Or is that features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. And on top of data breach notifications, or proactively identifies data brokers exposing your information on the web and automatically submits opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with our link. Go to Aura.com slash armed attorneys or check it out linked in the description below. But you see how these statements. And the fact that the first one ended in mistrial tells you that yeah. it was a close call. Yep. It was a close call. The jury deliberated. The jury was hung. A mistrial was declared. And 
if he had not given all those statements, given the state the opportunity to take that physical evidence and be like, ooh, see these things, see these things, see these things, right? There was also an issue of where the gun was found. Turns out the guy, the dead guy was left-handed. The gun was found by his right hand, which, I mean, if you're spinning around dropping guns, that I can see how that would happen, yeah. right? But when he's like, well, he had the gun in this hand and he was blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Mr. Campbell, I don't know if this was murder or self-defense. I don't. What I do know is if he had not given a detailed statement and had just testified at trial, that jury would have found him not guilty. I know that in my heart. And this is why these statements are so important. And this got raised recently. Masab Ayub did mm -hmm. a video uh, discussing, you know, whether or not you should talk to the police. Gave us a shout out. Big fans of Masad. But let's talk about these ultimate questions that we're talking about. You know, what happens when you talk to police? I mean, that's the first question we got to talk about. Well, you get locked into your statement. Yes. So, I mean, what shouldn't you do? Yeah, All right, let's talk about that first, because there's really, right, we've got three issues here. What shouldn't you do? What do the pros do? What do the experts do? Yep. Right. So there's there's three tiers of humans here. Yep. So the people who have never thought about this, never considered it, or just screw it up, what shouldn't you do? And that's spill your guts. Yes. Or even do a partial statement, right? Because once it's a partial statement, right. well, why didn't you say this? Why didn't you say this? Now you're up on the stand. Why didn't you tell us all these things, you know? And I don't mean like partial statement, like snippets of, mm -hmm. like, I mean, like, you got to be ready to do it or you got to be ready to not. But you can't sit there without an attorney and give some of the facts. And then that's it. Yeah. So this, you know, spilling the guts, this is why this is so difficult, giving dates, times, distances. How many um, times I shot. How many times you shot, all these things. So you you get locked in and then we have our physical evidence. Uh, a lot of times, and it's just the way our brains work, the two things don't line up, and it's not because you're trying to mis be misleading or hide mm -mm. the ball or lie to the police. Um, that's just how our brains work. So yeah. full statement, inadvisable. Right. You may not remember things correctly, and like I think very much probably happened to Mr. Campbell here, the state may decide you're a murderer, and then they are going to interpret the physical evidence to not match up with your statement. Because there is, we we would hope it is not true, there is a lot of physical evidence that is still easily manipulated. Things like ordering of shots, even things like blood spatter. You would think blood spatter is cut and dry mm -mm, because there are a lot of things that look like other things. If they want to see high velocity spatter instead of um, aspirated spatter, they're going to see it, right? Yeah. So you need to be, I mean, I think if you're not going to be a pro or an expert, you need to be ready to go to prison. Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't that, know. I think, that, I, think, I think that's a fair statement. But uh, the next one, let's talk about kind of what the pros do. And shout out to uh, some two lawyers. I follow, I've seen them on Instagram. They have a shut the, you know, what up Friday. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? This is what the pros do. They don't talk to the cops. Yes. They plead the fifth. Mm -hmm. um, so what is No that? statement at all. And a lot of attorneys will tell you, Self-defense incident, no statement at all. Shut your mouth. Yeah, shut your mouth. And so what does that look like when the police arrive on scene? Hey, want to talk to you, but I can't do it without an attorney present. I invoke my right to remain silent. I invoke my right to an attorney. That's what the pros do. And that if you just do that, you are going to be better off than 99% of people. Yes, you found an interesting statistic. Yeah, it was saying 75 to 80% of convictions are based on voluntary confessions. Yes, your voluntary statement. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's big. That's why the, uh, you know, you hear the advice, stitches get stitches, you know, don't talk, everybody walks. Emily loves that one. Um, Nobody talks, everybody walks. Oh, I got it wrong. Um, yeah. But that's why that advice exists. If, mm -hmm. if nobody is talking, the chances of law enforcement obtaining a conviction go way, way down. Mm -hmm. That's what the pros are doing. So that leads us to our last one. What are the experts doing? Right. Well, and, and I will say. Um, for a lot of people, you are not going to be able to do what the experts do. Because to be an expert, you have to be able to access an attorney who does this stuff in the moment. That's really hard to do. I have access to those attorneys, and I would use it if that tells you anything. If I were, if someone, the cleanest self-defense incident in the entire world, someone broke into my house and they had a gun and I shot that person, when the police arrived, if I had not had an opportunity to call Richard, to call Edwin, to call Leslie, I would say nothing. Yep. I would say nothing. You get a plan for these things, just like you go to the range, you become proficient. You can kind of start thinking through these things or having a plan in place. Should you find yourself in this situation, you could put yourself in a situation where maybe you go beyond the pro level. Right. And let's talk about the expert yeah, level. Yeah, the expert level. And there is, I will say there is one 
legal services plan that we know of that offers actual direct contact with attorneys at any moment. And so these people are really well off. Um, if you have someone who you know will answer the phone who does this, you are really well off. If you can get that attorney in that moment, you can be an expert. Or, I mean, if you happen to be, I mean, I think Masada, you've said that, like, you know, I mean, if he got in a self-defense incident, he would know exactly what to say. Yeah. I don't trust myself. He trusts himself. <laughs> um, and that's totally fair. Right. But you should be able to give defensive statements only after consulting with an attorney. And that attorney should have some opportunity to review what has happened. Yeah. So, I mean, for example, I had a client and um, the police would not give me any information about what was going on. I was on scene. We were ready to give a statement, but needed to see what was happening before I agreed that we would sit down and give a statement. They wouldn't. They, yeah. wouldn't, they wouldn't tell me anything. They wouldn't tell me anything. No statement. Because unfortunately, like... I can't help you if I have none of the information, right? So, I mean, a lot of things, I guess to be an expert, a lot of things have to converge. Yeah, you got to have a lot of stars aligned. But what are we ultimately talking about? It's about making a short, truthful statement mm -hmm. about the defensive incident. And when we say short, we're talking like five words. Yeah. When we say short, we're not talking about, oh, this happened, scene missing, coming home. Then We're not talking about any of that stuff. We're talking about... This guy just kicked down my door and I had to defend myself. Not something Boom. that could qualify as a partial statement, by the way. No, like, exactly right. You know, we're not, you know, we're not saying um, he was this far away when we're not saying. I shot I this many times. Right. Well, I mean, now, if the police will show me that there is, you know, one bullet hole in that guy, that's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. We can say, hey, I was in fear. He came at me. I shot him once. Right. Yeah. But I mean, but that's the thing. You need, you need someone there to assess in the moment whether or not like how how much whether that statement's five words or whether it's 12 words sure. right you need that person in the moment but it's going to look a lot like hey i was pumping gas you know somebody tried to rob me i had to defend myself emily's example somebody kicked down my door had to defend myself and my family um why we say this is probably better than just shutting up in most instances you know obviously acting on the advice of an attorney is you've established your self defense claim and that's the one thing that's missing from these folks who just completely shut down. Well, the police, they're not getting any defensive information out of you or, you know, were you in fear? Did you, you know, what were you responding to? Did the person have a weapon? These mm -hmm. things, they're not getting any of that information. And the first time maybe you're making that self-defense claim is on the witness stand, right. in which case the prosecutor is going to say, this is the first time we're mm -hmm. hearing about this self-defense claim. And I'll tell you, that has an impact. Yeah, it does. Now, I will say... I'm going to go back on what I said earlier, which is that even if you have not spoken to an attorney, right, in that case, I don't want you to give any sort of detail, no detail, but right. I will always tell people it is generally going to be okay to say, I knew I was going to die. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to die, right? Because if you shot someone and that's not true, you're in big trouble. So that better be true if you have shot someone. Yeah. And right? I, think, I think it's worth talking about the in fear for my life. Don't say that. Yeah. Don't say that. Don't I mean, say that. You know, that may have been conventional wisdom a decade and a half, two decades ago, but I will tell you, police, prosecutors, juries, everybody's immune to it. Yes. It means, I've had it used against a client at trial. It means absolutely it means nothing. nothing. It sounds pre-rehearsed. And that's why we talk about incorporating the facts of your case. Door got kicked down, mm -hmm. defended myself. You're saying the same thing, but it's tailored to your particular situation. Yes. But if you have not spoken to anyone about your situation, I'd still maintain you can say, like, look, I'm not going to give you a statement right now. This has been the worst night of my life. I will not speak until I've had an opportunity to consult an attorney, but I knew I was going to die tonight. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to die. Yeah. Because then, right, you've established it. Yep. So. And and why that's so important. One, say you have to testify at trial. Um, they won't be able to say you recently fabricated this. But also, in some states, you may not even have to testify uh, because self-defense has been established. You know, if the police go up and testify and say, oh, yeah, he told me that it was self-defense. Well, there's been some an introduction of some evidence of self-defense in some of these states that have legal presumptions of reasonableness. Maybe you don't even have to testify. Maybe that's enough. Yeah, and not getting on the stand, that's a good day. It's a good day. Just by way of review, don't spill your guts. Don't give that, oh, here's a lot of the facts, but maybe not everything because that's really, really, really going to hurt you. Um, if you're a pro, say nothing at all. You know, maybe the only thing you get out is, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Expert, though, 
if you can speak to an attorney, you can get out a little bit of that defensive statement. And it is so crucially important that you do that, if at all possible, right? Yeah. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti 2 a algorithm by sharing this video. But if you're interested in checking out a little bit more about how trials play out, how very small and significant things might be used against you, check out this video here. And until next time, we're the Arms Attorneys.